folks, some of you came today, but yeah, to share the gospel today about the Lord Jesus Christ in the book of Romans, chapter 1. It says this. also to the Greek. Paul says that it, it is the power of God. Why did he say that? He really believed that Jesus Christ was the Son of God. And the reason why he believed that is because he believed that the way to heaven was to understand who Jesus is. Now you might be skeptical. You might say, well, Jay, I don't believe. I, I'm, I'm skeptical about it. But have you ever looked at the evidence? Have you ever looked at the evidence for the resurrection of Jesus? Have you ever looked at the evidence in an objective way? Have you ever done that about Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ influenced the world more than anybody else. In history, science and philosophy. More than anybody else. Paul says, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, but it's the power of God to us salvation to everyone that believes to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Paul said it's salvation. Paul said that it's salvation. Why is the salvation? the reason why there's salvation. It says, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. We're not to worship any other gods. We're not to make an idol of anything. It says, Thou shalt... It says, Thou shalt not make to thyself any graven image or likeness. We're not to make scholarship a god. We're not to make learning a god. We're not to make anything, even our love of or our mobile phone, we're not going to make that God. Thou shalt take, thou shalt, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. We can't even curse the name of God. We're not to curse the name of God or to use God's name as a curse word. Have you ever done that? Have you ever cursed the name of God? Remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. Have you kept the Sabbath day? Do you honor the Sabbath day? Honor thy father and mother. Do you honor your father and mother? Thou shalt do no murder. Is there anybody that you hate? Anybody that you can't stand? Thou shalt not murder. We're not to have hatred in our heart. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Have, have you ever or have we ever looked to the things that we shouldn't have done or had sex before marriage? It says thou shalt not commit adultery. It says thou shalt not steal. Have you ever stolen anything? You shouldn't steal. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Have you bear false witness of your life? Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. You all right, mate? Do you have any questions, sir? There's evidence that Jesus died and rose again. Like, you know, without even using the Bible, I can show that Jesus died on a cross. Josephus, the Jewish historian, around about 90 AD, said that Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. Now, Josephus lived in the area where Jesus came from, Galilee. And he was an enemy of Jesus, yet he says that he, he believed Jesus died under Pontius Pilate. Tacitus, a Roman historian, Round about 90 to 100 AD said that Jesus died on the Pontius Pilate. So that's enemies against Jesus saying that he died. What about the resurrection? So we've established that he died, but can we establish that he rose from the dead? Now I can't give you like, I cannot prove totally 100% that he rose from the dead. Nobody can. But what I can do is I can give you evidence and it's fair evidence. So what is the evidence? 99% of the scholars today 
in the academic world will tell you this, that they believe that Jesus, that the disciples believe that Jesus rose from the dead. They believe, the scholars believe that they weren't, they weren't hallucinating, but they sincerely believe that he rose from the dead. Now here's, here's some evidence now. Why would you say that Jesus rose from the dead? Why would you preach it in Jerusalem? In Jerusalem, the Roman authorities would have come down on your head and also the Sahindra, the Jewish authorities. And they would have exposed you, they would have provided Jesus' body and said, look, he hasn't risen from the dead. So why would they go right into the heart of Jerusalem and say Jesus has rose from the dead? If you say they're deluded, well, they were battered, they were, they were beaten, they were even killed, and yet they persisted on preaching this message that he rose from the dead. On top of that, over 5,000 ancient manuscripts of the Gospels were written. Why would you write 5,000 ancient manuscripts about someone who was a myth or a legend? There had to be some historical truth about this Jesus. Yeah? Okay, God bless you. Thank you for listening. So there's abundant evidence there about Jesus rising from the dead, but it's up to you whether you're going to investigate it. If you're going to close your mind. I've heard recently in Manchester University that they do platforming, that you're not allowed to debate. I don't know if that's true, that if someone comes to debate, if you don't like them, you kick them out. That's not being intellectual. That's being anti-intellectual. If you're open to the intellect, you should be open to the evidence. So the question is, have you opened yourself up to the historical evidence of who Jesus is and what he has done? Have you ever done that? Because he is the Son of God. It says, it says, there it is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So why? Why is it you're living today? What is the purpose of it? Is the purpose to get drunk? Is the purpose to get a PhD, to get a degree? Is that the reason why you're living? Just to get a degree and then to get a good job? But if you get a degree, if you get a good job, what about when you die? Where do you go when you die? What happens when you die? Hi guys, God bless you. What happens when you die? You can have a degree. You can have a PhD. I've got a degree from my university. You can get a degree. But what happens? God bless you. What happens when you die? What happens then? How's your degree going to help you there? What does your degree say about Jesus? Who was Jesus? Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What do you say about Jesus? Do you say he's the way? Do you say he's the truth? Do you say he's the life? Have you investigated it? Or are you just happy enjoying your life, having a laugh, going to college, going to university, you get your degree, you've had a good time, you've had a good drink, you've had a few bits of sex that's in there, and it's all been good. That isn't the meaning of life. If you think that's the meaning of life, you're deluded. Because you're going to die one day. One day you're going to die. And he drink and be married, but tomorrow we die isn't going to help you. You need to know where you stand with God. And Jesus, Paul said that Jesus is the righteousness of God. And look that phrase, the righteousness of God. How are you going to get right with God? How are you going to get forgiven before God? He said, Jay, I just hope you forgive me. Hope is not enough. Jay, I'll try, I'll try and do my best. I'll do my best, but one day I'll get to heaven. That is not good enough. Because Paul says this, all fall short of the glory of God. We all fall short of the glory of God. We all fail. And we all become guilty. And what we need is forgiveness. We need forgiveness. We need Jesus. We died on that cross to reconcile us and to bring us home. We need Jesus to save us. We need Jesus to bring us home. That's what we need. And that's why he died on that cross. He died in your place. You see, Jesus never sinned. He never did anything wrong. He never lied. He never committed adultery. He never did anything wrong. Jesus was perfect. Yet, he died on that cross as a murderer. He died on that cross as a thief. He 
He died on that cross as an adulterer. He died on that cross on your behalf. He was dying on your behalf that you may be reconciled to God. You see, that's why you were made. You were made for relationship. When you kiss your boyfriend or you kiss your girlfriend, you're having a relationship with them. That's what God made you for, to have a relationship with Him. To love God and your neighbor as yourself. That's why He made us. That's why He made us. He made us to have a relationship with Him. He made us to have a relationship with Him. And He wants you to be in relationship with Him. He wants you to know Him and to know that you can have a relationship with Him. That's why you were made. Not just a part of scholarship. I love scholarship. I love to study. I love to study all the time. But that is not the purpose. We can study, 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 but it will be a weariness to the flesh. The question is, when we study, what are we going to do with it? Where does it lead? Is it leading to a knowledge of God? Is it leading to a loving our neighbor? Jesus was the righteousness of God. He brought a way forward for you and me to know God. And if you want to know God today, if you want to know why you're here, what is the meaning of life, the answer is in Jesus. You see, He, uh, he is amazing. He, his teaching was amazing. His parables, the prodigal son, is amazing. His, his, his thinking was amazing. When He said, I and the Father are one. When He said, I am the light of the world. When He said, I am the bread of life. Who spoke like this? Nobody spoke like Jesus. Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. And my friends, if you want to know God, if you want to be reconciled to God, if you want to be right with God, it's knowing that Jesus died on that cross. It's knowing that Jesus gave His life for you. He said, in, in, in John 14, He said, I am the light of the world. In, sorry, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but to me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And it's no good being skeptical and saying, you know what? I don't believe it. You've got to have evidence to show it didn't happen. You've got to have evidence to say it didn't happen. And I have to have evidence to say it did happen. But you can't walk around and say, you know, Jay, I disagree with you. You've got to say, why? You've got to give me some evidence to say he didn't die from that grave. And I've got to give you evidence that he rose from the grave. And that is evidence. That is evidence about Jesus. There is evidence about Christ. There is evidence about it. Hello. Can I ask you to me? Yeah, this is a human type. Do what you like with the payments for uh, different people. And... <laughs> Yeah, apparently he's saying that it's it's um, it's uh, university land, so I'm just gonna uh, move just for the sake of being polite. <laughs>